Oh hey, didn't see you there. Dr. Fitzak, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are using LR Timelapse 6, the public final release. I've talked about the beta versions and what we can do with it, what's new with the platform or the program. And in this video, I'm going to do a chilled, relaxed editing session. I'm going to re-edit, reprocess an old sequence from a couple of years back here in London using the uh, LR Timelapse Pro 6.0 RC1. So that's the first stable final release that you can get now. A few of the links down below. Yeah, I'm gonna run you through how I edit using both my own presets and the built-in stuff into LR Timelapse. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, grab a snack, whatever, follow along. I'm just gonna, yeah. I guess this is a demonstration video. I'm gonna run you through how I edit with LR Timelapse 6. So this is the sequence that we're working with, which is 671 items long. That is the first photo. I think I shot that on my 60 Mark II, 19 Feb 2019, crazy. And this is the last photo, which it went quite dark from memory. I shot this one with uh, Charles from both hemispheres on Instagram. It was fun hangs, we definitely need to shoot more. So what I'm doing here now is I'm dragging that into LR time-lapse, which I was gonna say, that was a bit slack, but uh, it triggers the, uh, now that you can, you can drag and drop folders in there, which is nice. And then it triggers the initialization or the loading of the EXIF data. And here on the left, in this panel, you can see, uh, first of all, a brightness curve. I have loaded the sequence in before, um, hence the extremely fast loading. And there's also this square that I've used to deflicker, which now that I've double clicked on it, it removes that square as a, a reference area for the deflickering. And then it reprocesses the luminance. Because the night sky was so dark, you can see that the brightness at the end actually goes up now because it's not, no longer using that dark bit. But yeah, as you can see, here's a preview straight out of camera. These are the adjustments that you do as you go through the sequence. This zigzag pattern is uh, what happens when you shoot a holy grail time-lapse in the manual method. I've almost entirely stopped doing it this way because there's been no need. The Lumix cameras that I'm using have this built-in exposure leveling and the Canons have it as well and the Sonys have it now and I think maybe the Fujis, I'm not sure. Let me know if you shoot Fuji. Let me know in the comments what you shoot regardless. It's always good to get some uh, See who's, who's using what, pretty much. So, this is the whole sequence. Let's begin. As you can see, simplified workflows here at the top. We got visual workflow and basic or JPEG or legacy workflow. Keyframes wizard. I always like to add more. I'd rather add more than less keyframes. So, let's go with 15. Makes these blue diamonds, as you can see. Holy grail wizard is the next button. And yeah, what you want to do here is get that line as close to the middle as possible. That's pretty much it. Save that. I'm also gonna turn on my keycaster so you can follow along with the keys that I'm pushing. And I forgot to open the Lightroom catalog for this project. This is all automatically generated, these folders. If you know me, if you've been following me for a while, you know efficiency is key and I use an app called Post Haste and my Pro Time Lapse templates to set up these project folders and sub folders. That's just the best way to do it. You can buy that or it's part of the Ultimate Time Lapse course, etc. as well. Now we've got Lightroom open, almost open. Slow load, I've got a new screen here. I've got a big screen, 4K HDR, which takes up a couple of resources and then I'm screen recording and all that at the same time as well. So this poor old laptop is struggling. All right. I got Lightroom. We now are going to drag this button in here. Now we're going to just, yeah, click add or use the add import method, which keeps the folder in its place and all the photos in its place. And this is what we're importing. Hit the import button here on the bottom right. Once everything loads. It's uh, good to uh, work on solid state drives for this, by the way. It really speeds things up. Quick little edit interruption here. I want to let you know about my two new eBooks. One is about time lapse. One is about hyperlapse. It teaches you how to do both those things. And you sign up to the Time Warp Weekly with it, which is my newsletter for all things time lapse. So industry news, gear reviews, store discounts, featured films, interviews with creators, and a bunch more. Check it out by downloading the books down below. And now we see these two operations here. It's importing the files and it's fetching the initial previews which is useful as well. As this is loading, as this is getting imported, I'm going to select this filter here. I'm going to change that to the LR timelapse keyframes, which is a filter that only shows us the 
blue diamond keyframes and they coincide with these pink visual preview um, frames, I guess. So here, the keyframes that we created with the keyframes wizard, the blue diamonds, they are translated to four star keyframes in Lightroom Classic. As I said, quite a lot happening at the same time. I think I, think I just need a better computer for all this kind of stuff, TBH. Uh, let's stop fetching these initial previews because we're gonna re-edit all of them anyway. Let's just keep on importing these files at their current location. And boom, that sped things up. Now, how does this process work? It's so simple and I'm going, I'm going to use my own time-lapse presets that I've developed last year and that I'm redeveloping soon and I'm gonna add some extras to them. Everyone that's bought my time-lapse course has access to these as well. So first, photo, I hit D, set the exposure manually is the first step. So this is my time-lapse presets, uh, their steps and looks. We're just gonna use these steps here. Set exposure manually. So using shift, I'm just gonna go way bright because I started shooting a little bit late. Uh, treatment and profile, going uh, camera and landscape for that one. And then we're gonna go golden hour, white balance. Might actually go a bit more, let's go 7500, you know what, let's go 8000. Make it look a little bit yellow because we were already in blue hour so we're just gonna force, we're gonna force this into, uh, into something that it really wasn't. It's the beauty of color grading raw files, right? Uh, let's go with a medium contrast, emphasize the colors which adds vibrance and saturation, sharpen and denoise a bit, lens corrections, and I'm gonna hit R. I wanna straighten out that bridge a bit because I shot wide angle looking up. Perspective goes like this, so we're gonna straighten that. If you hit R, you get these handy little guides. And now with this constraint crop button, if I go on the vertical one and go left, it kinda tilts it straight a bit. And you can use these guides that you get from the cropping with the R to straighten that out. And once you're done, shaboom, enter. And let's have a quick look before and after. That is, if it ever shows up on screen, a solid difference, right? Quite a solid difference. Looks like daytime, almost. Okay, hit G to go back to the overview. Now with Shift, I'm going to click on the last photo, and then this little scroll thingy here, whatever you call it, I'm going to sync the keyframes, and boop, this applies all the edits that I just did on the first photo to all the other ones. And now I'm not changing much. I'm going to only be changing the exposure and the white balance across the sequence. And I'm doing that visually based on these images. I mean, the white balance actually isn't too bad. So maybe we'll just keep the white balance. Usually I just kind of gauge where I should start changing it. And then I, uh, I change that there. So maybe, yeah, let's, let's start changing the white balance. Like here it's too yellow for me. So let's start changing a couple photos before. Let's start changing it to here. And I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit of little bit of light to it as well, a little bit of exposure. Even though I've already pushed it quite a bit, um, we're already 1.32 stops over. Uh, but first, what we're gonna do here is start changing the white balance on this photo. So I'm dropping 700 points there because I just don't like the way the buildings look in that yellow, the yellow lights in the offices. I like them to be more white, uh, pretty much. So that's that. And let's add. 0.2 of a stop exposure more. Hit G again. Shift click the last photo, boom. And now I'm going to remember how many points white balance I took off from the previous photo to that one was about 800. So I'm gonna possibly repeat that. Next photo, hit D and go down 800 points or maybe a thousand points in temperature in Kelvin. White balance, so let's go 7,000. And I often revisit, I often just redo this because it's quite quick, as you can see, it's super efficient, super fast to do this now. So I quite like that. Um, yeah, let's just keep going. Let's test out dropping white balance by a thousand points on the next four photos or so, because we want to get to eventually around 4,000 Kelvin. And then I want to start ramping the exposure a little bit as well in the next ones, in the next couple of pickies. Because yeah, that last photo now doesn't look too, too hot for me, doesn't look too attractive. Bring that white balance to six 
thousand. There's like a fucking ten second delay in everything I do here. That looks good. Beach ball. A lot of beach balls today. Sync the keyframes again. Sync in the keyframes. Wow, riveting, captivating tails here. And that ending is starting to look slightly better if it would actually update the previous, but like you see on the third last photo, it was looking slightly better. Now here, once again, white balance change, keeping the exposure as is for now. I think I actually lost a bit of information in the, if you can see the histogram, a lot of these pixels are just way, way to the left for the, the balance in those pixels, I guess. All right, we're at 5,000 white balance now. And shift click, sync the keyframes. And I'm gonna add a touch of light. This one, maybe 0.1 of a stop. I've got the exposure map to plus and minus on my keyboard, so I can just hit plus or the, uh, what do you call the, is equal to sign. Helak hat symbol in Dutch. It is Friday, you can do Flemish Fridays. Um, all right, let's crank 4,000. Final white balance, let's end it on that. Nice and nice and white, nice and clean. I quite like, I quite like that. G again, and then shift click. Think the keyframes, and I think we're there. Maybe we'll add a little bit more light here because it, I didn't let it go quite a bit darker, but then it kind of levels out as far as uh, exposure dropping goes on that. So yeah, look, this 0.2 stops I'm gonna add there because it's just, it's really quite dark. Maybe I should add more, but that's fine. That'll be fine. Be a good time slice probably this one. Maybe we can include that at the end here as well. And then as per usual, shift click on the last photo, sync the keyframes. Et voila, that's pretty much it. Let's hit D to show the new preview for this final photo because it hasn't been updating properly. That's what we're gonna end up uh, with. Screw it. 0.3 of a stop, light extra because it is really quite dark. So in total, we've got a 2.15 stops of light here. And let's have a quick look on the before and after. <laughs> That's so dark. Uh, using Y on the keyboard, that shows you what I shot. I think, man, I really let that go way too dark. I'm not sure what I was doing there. Probably too many chats with Charles. And that's what we're gonna get out of it. So, not too bad. I've dropped the highlights a bit there still because I found some of the walls a bit, uh, a bit hot. Now I'm gonna select all these photos, all these keyframes, and I'm going to right click, go to metadata, and I'm gonna save metadata to files. You can also hit Command or Control S. Then we're going back to LA Time Lab 6, and you can see the Adobe DNG converter has already started converting those keyframes here. But first, what we need to do is hit the auto transition button, which is going to change all the photos between the keyframes, because now we've only changed those blue diamond keyframes, right? But as soon as I hit auto transition, it actually extrapolates, interpolates, what do you call it? It figures out how much to add of these values to the photos in between all the keyframes. And that's pretty cruisy, and that's pretty much all there is to it. There shouldn't be any flickering, but if there are any flickers in the shot, we can uh, play around with a reference frame that you saw at the start by just dragging that on the first photo, and then it will use a part of the sky to um, use that, or look at that as a, a an area in the frame that shouldn't flicker at all. So if there's any visual flickering based in that reference area, it's gonna remove that. Uh, and that's kind of, I guess, global flickering, I would call that. And uh, let's just let this run. Now, Let's render this using LR Timelapse 6, which I'm not sure if I've demoed yet. Let's just let this run for a bit and we'll come back when this process is done. I hadn't noticed this, this is new. It has timing in the visual luminance. So it's calculating now, as it's building the visual previews, which is pretty much applying all the edits I've done to the raw files, the preview files, it's rendering a low res preview. Um, it gives you a timing on how long it's taking for all these photos. And so this pink line is what it's gonna be like. If there's any jagged spikes or anything like that in that pink line, that means you're gonna have to deflicker, which the next step is pretty much like a magical step. Um, but it's looking pretty sweet. That's pretty solid. 
so far. I'm pretty sure I can. No, that's asking too much, really. I can drag this. If you've got a really beefy PC, you're much better off than me on my four and a half thousand pound laptop. Yay, Intel. Um, you know, I bought this laptop because I really needed it at the time, and it's done good things for me, but now, wish I had something else. But I wouldn't have been able to um, keep doing what I was doing at the time if I didn't change that lappy, so. Um, but yeah, now, next step is just waiting, waiting for this to finish. So I might just sit back and wait for this to finish, and then we'll have a look at the previews, see what they look like. Bing, and there it is. The internal previews are done using the uh, visual previews. If you click this button here now, visual previews, it removes all that. But uh, I want to show you what it looks like when we slide through. Looks pretty freaking clean. Uh, what you can also do is once this has all been rendered as a preview, hit Shift Command P, and it will render out this as a video file, which you can then go and uh, look at in the low res. Bing, bing. So, quick review here. Absolutely flawless. You can see the bending in the sky because it's so compressed and it doesn't have enough data to show the gradient in the sky um, going from day to night, uh, brightness and colors, etc. But yeah, this is, a, this is a good scene. There's no flickering here. Um, I'm, I'm pumped. Let's line and look at different parts of the frame. There's no flickering here. I am super, super happy. Let's note the white balance that I now, no, I probably should, nah, probably wanted to start ramping a little bit earlier. This, it's all, it's all quite yellow compared to the end, which the, you know, where everything's quite white. Um, you can ramp that faster or just start ramping a, a bit earlier on in the sequence. So I could have started ramping maybe here for the white balance, so it's already quite white by this time, but then the sky is gonna be super blue. So, you know, these are, you give a, you win some, you lose some, you take some, you give some, what am I saying? Um, that's, a, that's a preview thing. Now, I usually would go to After Effects now to render this out, but because it's LRT6, we have the new fully internal render engine, which uses JPEGs as an intermediary file, so it will generate JPEG files, and then from that JPEG file, it will create your final video file now. This is great to have that option. I absolutely love it that it's built in. However, keep in mind that JPEG files are 8-bit in uh, bit depth or bit size or whatever you want to call it, which means that they have less, there is less data to, for example, uh, create gradients, smooth gradients in the sky. So under certain, under certain conditions, you might see banding if you use this option, which is why I would recommend the other option for the highest possible quality, or I would just usually go to After Effects myself because I can batch render in there. Now, as far as the settings that I would use, you can screenshot this if you want. I'm gonna start with this production 4K HD, Ultra HD, excuse me, ProRes file, source resolution, uh, high quality, you can go ultra high as well, uh, which goes to the 4 for 4 color sampling. But yeah, this is pretty much all I'm after here. I'm not using any fancy color management in this sequence or in this video example. We can do that in the future if you want. And also in the future, I just remembered I was going to show you how to edit completely from within LR time lapse, uh, but I used Lightroom because I think most people will do that. But yeah, I um, just realized that now while filming that I was going to do that. So that's another video we can do in the future. Now uh, that's pretty much it. Set your output file, output path, file path where it's going to render to. And if I now hit export and render, it's going to start creating from the raw files that we've color graded a set of JPEG photo files, and then it's going to compile those into your final video file which is fantastic. That's pretty much it. Thank you, Gunther, for making some really cool software. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more about time-lapse, guess what, guess what, guess what? I have the ultimate time-lapse course. It's now got over 80 or 81 videos and counting, more than six hours of knowledge that I have gathered over about 11 years of trialing and erroring and learning and experiencing the world in time-lapse and hyperlapse all in the one course featuring astrophotography, hyperlapse, how to predict sunsets and sunrises, stabilization, planning, shooting, editing, how to use photo pills, how to figure out where stuff's gonna be, what gear to bring, just so much stuff in there. From that, I've also taken the hyperlapse videos, hyperlapse chapters, 
and I've put that into their own course. So you now have the Ultimate Hyperlapse course available as well, which is just a fantastic deal. If you ask me, the links are down below. I've got some free eBooks as well. My affiliate link for LR Timelapse is down below as well. You support me in the channel by buying LR Timelapse via my link. And that's pretty much it. If you have any video requests, please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, may your skies be filled with fluffy clouds.